Hi everyone, this is Ms. Leibowitz. I'm going to be making a video about what we're going to be learning and reading this week. Um, this week we're going to be talking about connections in history, which is kind of like talking about cause and effect. So when we're thinking about connections and cause and effect, those are the things we're going to be talking about this week and what your assignments are going to look like. So let's get started. Uh, our learning objective this week, um, our focus is that we want to be able to describe or tell about the connections between historical events, which are just important events that happened in the past, so we want to be able to tell about the connections and historical events in a text and that's going to help you understand how and why events happen in history. Okay, so you can see describing or telling about the connections between historical events in a text will help you understand how the effect and why the cause events happen in history. I know that that sounds like a lot, but we're going to go into it a little bit deeper right now. So when we talk about connecting events, when we want to talk about that, we're talking about to connect. When we say connect, that means to fit two or more things together, kind of like a puzzle piece. So when we're talking about events in history, they can connect and follow each other in an order like first, next, and last, which is like sequence. So historical events. Historical events are just history from the past, things that have happened in history in real life. And we just wanna talk about how they connect and how they fit together. So um, it can also show you how one event caused another event. Why did this happen? What happened in history that made things go together and caused certain effects? So when you think about historical connections, historical connections, like I said, are just important things that happened in the past and how they connect together. So an example of a historical connection is when the pilgrims migrated from England over to the United States and created their own towns and cities. So if you're looking at this first picture, it says a long time ago, people in England were not allowed to practice their own religion. So that was one step in the historical connection. Then they tried to get their king to change his mind and he would not. He would not let them practice their own religion. They must practice the religion that he wanted them to. So then the next connection is they took boats and found a new land. They created their own towns and cities with their own rules. So these events are all connected. One thing causes the next thing to happen. So the first problem that they have is that they're not allowed to practice their own religion. So then that causes them to ask their king to change his mind. He does not change his mind. He doesn't want to have them practice their own religion. So this, him saying no, causes them to get on their boats, to find new land, and to start their own country and cities and towns where they can be free to practice whatever religion they want. So these are all connections. They're like puzzle pieces. This first step here could not happen without all of these other steps going along with it. So they go together and they're all connected. The effect of them being able to live in their own country and their own towns and have their own freedom religion, uh, re religious freedom was caused by these first steps. They would not be able to work together without those other steps. So they're all connected like puzzle pieces. So in class, we've already kind of learned about cause and effect. So this is probably going to be a little bit of a refresher, but the cause is the why. Cause, why. The cause is why something happens. So I water plants 
And this causes them to grow. The cause is watering the plants. The why something happens. My plants are growing, but the cause is why are they growing? What causes them to grow? And what causes them to grow is me watering them. So the cause is why something happens. Sometimes the cause is going to come before or after, but the cause is always why something happens. The effect is what happens. So the effect is what happens or the end result, what happens in the end. So the effect, I water the plants, that's my cause, and the plants grew taller. So if my plants are growing taller, that's the effect, what happens. What happens is the effect, what happens. The plants were growing, the plants got taller, the plants got healthier, that's my effect. The cause why that happened is that I watered the plants. The effect is the plants got taller. So cause and effect also go together. They're puzzle pieces that work together. The cause is why, the effects what happened. So I want you to look at these pictures. How are these events, how are these pictures, these steps connected? I want you to think for a second. How does this connect to this, connect to this? All right, we're gonna move on. First, this first picture, the girl is making something. We don't know exactly what she's making until we see the other pictures, but the girl is making something. You can see her glue and her scissors and her paper and her holding what she's making in her hand. So the first thing, the first connection, the first event is she's making something. Then the girl is wrapping what she made. She has paper that she's folding around what she made. Now I want you to think, would she be able to wrap this gift before she makes it? She would not be able to wrap the gift before she makes it. She has to make the gift first and then she has to wrap the gift. So these two are connected. She makes the gift and then she wraps it. And then the last connection, she gives the gift to her friend. So all of these steps are connected. She wouldn't be able to do all of those steps in a different way. What do you think? Why? did she do it in this order? I want you to think for a second, why did she do it in this order? She wouldn't be able to have a finished product or a finished gift if she did it in any other order. So you have to make sure that you're thinking, how is this connected? How do they cause each other to happen. She can't get to the effect, this last picture, she can't get here without following those steps before. She has to follow those steps and follow those connections to be able to get to the effect, the end result. All of these other steps are causes that give her the effect, her gift at the end. So when we're thinking about connections and steps, we have to remember these quick little things. So events in a history text can connect and follow each other from first, next, and last, like sequence. So history text, history stories, they are connected from what happened first, what happened next, and what happened last. They are connected like puzzle pieces. And they can also, also show how one event caused another. The people in England could not have their own religion, which caused them to want to move and go 
to a different place. That's the effect. Those connections, those, those connections in history are connected like puzzle pieces and they act like the cause and effect. They show how one event caused another. And remember, cause is why something happened and the effect is what happened. The cause is why, the effect is what happened, and or the end result. So you're gonna want to probably watch this video or read the PowerPoint that I put up a few times before you go and do some of your assignments. Um, if you have any questions, make sure to have your parents send me an email. All right, guys, see you later.